Hello everyone and welcome back to our third installment of Advent Hymns Advent Prayers. As I have said before, this is my selfish way of engaging in these beloved hymns when we can't sing them together in church this particular season. So thank you for joining me. Uh, this morning's hymn is Lo He Comes with Clouds Descending. It's one of my very favorites, although I maybe say that about all of them. Um, and hopefully you've listened to the video uh, that should, the, the link to the video is posted in the notes to this. Um, and the recording that I chose is actually from Litchfield Cathedral in England. Ironically, it is the cathedral that our choir was supposed to go to uh, back in August. And of course that trip was canceled, uh, but you still get to see beautiful images of the church and hear their beautiful choir. The tune that they used is uh, found in our hymnal, it's number 57, and the tune, name is, the tune name is called Helmsley. It's a melody that was written by Augustine Arne in the 1700s, and the text to this hymn uh, was written by Charles Wesley, who of course is, was one of the founders of what we now know as the United Methodist Church. There's another tune uh, that's called St. Thomas, and if you had the opportunity to watch our Lessons in Carol's service that we um, posted this last Sunday, then you heard the, a, a portion of our bell choir playing that tune. Um, so now you will have heard both. The, the text, the words of this text reflect on uh, the, the coming of Christ, the joy and glory that heaven and earth will know when Christ returns. And there's this refrain in the first and last verse that you heard, Alleluia. So we hear that refrain, but in the second verse, um, the, the hymn recalls Christ's death, and it describes the people who were responsible. Let's see, let me read the words. It says, um, those who sold, pierced, and nailed him to the tree, deeply wailing, deeply wailing, is the refrain. And so rather than focusing uh, so much on the exact words of the text, like I've done in previous weeks, I started to think about these two refrains, Alleluia, Alleluia, and Deeply Wailing, Deeply Wailing. And I really think that this particular Advent, we are living in between Alleluia and Deeply Wailing. Um, and I wonder if that can kind of set our prayers for this week. We have a, a parishioner who is um, an ICU nurse, and she has uh, been wonderful throughout the pandemic of emailing me accounts about what she is experiencing in the ICU over at Norfolk General with COVID patients. And her stories really are a reminder of how ravishing this disease has been. And she told me this last week about a woman who had died in her ICU. And when she died, her husband was actually downstairs in the ER at Norfolk General waiting for a bed because he also was suffering from COVID. And so the chaplain at the hospital had to go and inform the husband and their son that um, the mother and the wife had died. And that image keeps coming to mind for me as I think about that refrain of deeply wailing. I think it's a season when so many people are grieving this year and, and they may, we may not be suffering from COVID in the way that that family is, um, but we're all struggling with the effects of living in this pandemic, whether that is loneliness, whether it's isolation, whether it's worrying about our children, um, whether it's the exhaustion of healthcare workers and essential workers. Um, this time has been especially difficult for people who struggle with anxiety um, and addiction. I know that, that children are struggling uh, as they are desperate to be back in school. So this, this notion of deeply wailing to me reflects this collective isolation and grief that we're feeling, and particularly as the news unfolds and the death toll continues to mount. I don't know uh, if any of you had the, the chance to look at the New York Times from this last Sunday, but they always do a year review in pictures, and some of the photographs this year are um, particularly moving. I think you can probably see them on the website in the year in review, but it really points to the grief of the entire world. Um, around this illness, and then, of course, all kinds of other suffering. And yet, we also live in the midst of this other refrain, the Alleluia. And that's what we remember this season also, 
the promise and the hope and the joy of the coming of Christ is what the hymn heralds and what the angels herald. We live with the faith that because God came to be one of us in the form of that little baby in the manger, we are given the promise that we are never, ever alone. And that is uh, plenty reason for us to sing Alleluia in the midst of the deeply wailing. And so I think the challenge throughout this entire pandemic for so many of us has been to recognize our own hardships and our own struggles and our own loss and, and balance that also with our own privilege and the blessings of our lives. And so maybe our challenge and gift this Advent um, in these final weeks is to sort of uh, allow ourselves to dwell in that in-between, between those two refrains of deeply wailing and then the anticipation of the coming of Christ when we sing Alleluia. Amen.